Hello everyone and welcome to another iClone 7 Academy tutorial. Today's topic will be IBL Baking. As you know, the PBR system does not have true object-to-object -object reflection, so in order to compensate for that, it uses the IBL. Now let's take a look at the IBL we're using right now. It's the scene of, it's a snow scene. And I'll show you here real quick. Right now, is this image right here. Now, obviously, this scene does not have any part of the kitchen. And because IBLs do not, does not recognize object occlusion, we're seeing here on the sphere, the actual reflection of the IBL without any part of the kitchen being in there. And this sphere right here is 100% reflective. So in order to get around that, Reillusion created what is called an IBL bake. Using this, we can take a snapshot from whatever object we have selected if, uh, of a 360 degree image from that point in 3D space. So you can either use a dummy prop as this one right here, as you can see over here, is set as dummy. That means it will not render in, in, in the on the image. Or you can actually use an object that's actually in the scene in order to create the IBL from. So we will use the ball later on for a close-up. Right now we'll use the sphere for that. And once again, taking think about this, the IBLs do not respect occlusion from geometry. So what's happening here is rays from the sphere are coming right through the wall and illuminating this part of the kitchen. And rays from the sphere from this side is illuminating that part of the kitchen. Now, once we bake the IBL, and I'm going to go ahead and just load the bake because the bake could take sometimes from any, any time from 20 seconds to a couple of minutes, depending how fast your GPU is. So I don't want to make you wait. So I'm going to go ahead and just load our first bake. Now, this is what the bake looks like. So we went from this uh, snow scene into this. Now you notice here that we have the geometry from the scene. And as we zoom in into the sphere here and rotate around, orbit around it, we can see all the pieces. There's the table and there's the little, the little stand over there. So this looks a lot more realistic. There is a gotcha to this is because every time you bake an IBL, it has, it has to have a point in, of reference in 3D space. Now, this ball right here is perfectly reflective, but the reflections here are not very accurate. In order to have a more accurate reflection, you would have to select the actual ball over here and bake it from that point. However, for this overall image, which is more of a, an, a wide shot here of the kitchen or a medium shot of the kitchen, it is best to go ahead and just select the point somewhere close to the center of the room so you get an overall reflection for everything that works pretty much for everything. For the, if you want to do a close-up, then you can go ahead and select an object that is closer to the scene. So we'll do that later. Right now, let's concentrate on this. Now, there's a feature here called Source init Initial HDR for IBL Baker. Now, what this means is when you click on this, it will use the actual source, which the source was the, um, the plain uh, snow scene. And this is useful when you actually are testing the first initial step for your IBL. Now, what do I mean by that? If I bake this image right now, it will look exactly the same over and over because this was always, this would be always the, in the IBL that is going to use to make the bake. However, if this is not checked on, what's going to happen is it's going to bake on top of this bake right here. And let's see what happens when we do that. You will notice that the scene gets a little darker and the tone starts to change. This is because, and I will show you here in Photoshop, this is because now on the first test that we did, we have this nice warm floors. So the lighting coming from the bottom of the IBL 
now is actually lighting the ceiling part of the floor of the of of the scene. <laughs> so you get a much more natural lighting out of it. So usually the second bake if would be your best bet for if you're using uh, uh, um, lighting for interiors. Usually the second bake will be your best bake. For exteriors is not so important. For interiors is much more important. And of course reflections. It all depends if you have some uh, uh, objects that are need, need to be reflected that are uh, close to each other. So. As you can see here, it makes the scene much more natural because everything that's occluded is there, occluded, and the shadows are being, everything that's in shade is not being lit by the IBL now, it's actually being lit by the first bake of the geometry. So, however, you can actually bake as many times as you want. However, usually by the third bake, you just don't get the, a desirable result. But it is possible to do it, and if you want to go do something crazy, it might just work for you. However, you start to get some artifacts when you start baking on, a th on the third step right here. And, and look how much it changes from one to the other. This is a bake on top of a bake on top of another bake. So this is a third bake here. So this start, this obviously changes a lot. And again, it's all up to you what kind of look you're going for, but then it's, you start getting some artifacts. So I would suggest stay between the first and second bake. So just for you to know that you do have that option. One thing I like to point out also is if you're baking a 4K image, make sure that in your preferences, your max texture resolution is set to at least the same resolution as your IBL bake, because if you have the max texture resolution to 2K, it's going to down -res that image. So you're not gonna get that sh those sharp reflections and there's no point really baking this at 4K, you know, if you're gonna just be displaying it at 2K, just render it at 2K. So you'll save some memory that way. So it all depends how accurate you need those reflections to be. So uh, keep that in mind. All right, so let's go ahead and bring up the first bake here or actually the second bake was the best one. So let's take a look at that one. And now let's go ahead and change camera angles. Let's get, let's move on to the close up. Now notice in this bowl that we're not seeing the reflection of the table and this statues over here. This is because we're using the IBL that we baked from the point of view of this sphere over here. So it took a 360 image of that sphere from that point of view. So when we get to the close-ups, uh, it doesn't quite work. So this is a good situation in which you want to rebake uh, your IBL. However, you don't want to bake it from this already baked image. You want to you always use your initial source for that to keep lighting consistent because uh, that's that's the way we worked it because this is the way we actually took the, uh, the la we did the first bake for the kitchen on the uh, open shot, right? So I went ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and load the image here for our bake. There we go. Mm, no, not that one. And there we go. This is much better. And you will notice here that uh, we do have the table being reflected on the bowl and the statues. This, this looks a lot more accurate for as far as reflections is concerned. One thing to keep in mind is the pivoting point when you bake your reflections. It's very important. I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you where the pivot point right is right now. Right now it's in the center. And you gotta make sure that this pivot point does not touch any other geometry. Otherwise, what you're gonna get is what is called a clipping situation, where the camera gets clipped in half. And I will show you this in Photoshop what I mean. Now, right now, the pivoting point is right at the bottom of this bowl. And as you can see here, it's cutting right through the table and we can see the legs of that kitchen, of, that, um, of those chairs. So, let me show you what the render looks like on the actual ball. See, you have this cutout square on the reflection itself. And this is again because 
it took that 360 image from a point that it was actually intersecting that table. So also always make sure that you, when you create your IBLs, you bake your IBLs, it's coming from the center point. Now, right here is from the center point. As you can see here, yes, you get a much better, much better bake. So you can see the table and this is what the render looks like right here, like so. So as you saw before, because now the center point is in the middle of the bowl and it's not intersecting any piece of geometry. However, for uh, aesthetics, you can actually render, let's render, what would happen if we render this with a pivot point right at the top of the bowl? This will squish your image downwards, which means you're going to get to see more of those statues on that reflection, like so. So this is, a, again, an aesthetic choice, and you, depending on the importance of what you want to see on that reflection, you can go ahead and cheat. So it doesn't matter how much you cheat as long as you get the story point across, right? So that's the important part. And if it looks believable enough, people are going to buy it. So that's not, that's not an issue at all. So to recap, you can bake IBLs on top of each other many times. And doing so will give you different aesthetic choices, like this. So this is our first bake, this is our second bake, and this is our third bake. The same thing with the close-up. First bake, second bake, third bake. This is all about aesthetic and choices. It's all up to you which one works better for you. The second thing is, using source initial HDRI for IBL Baker. If you have this on, no matter how many times you rebake this image, you're always going to get the same result. So remember, if you want to bake on top of something you already bake, make sure this checkbox is unchecked. Also, keep in mind, don't forget, if you're going to render images that are going to be 4K for the IBL bakes, make sure that in your settings, Control P to bring up the settings or preferences and make sure that your max texture resolution size is set to something that is 4K or bigger. So if you're not going to use this high resolution, just bake a lower resolution. Do not go crazy and then have this at 2K because you're just going to waste memory. And third, let's make sure that the pivot point does not intersect with any other geometry. Very important. And remember that you can move it into any point in 3D space to create that bake to give you the best desirable reflections that you're looking for. So this will go ahead and conclude our tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you have any questions, uh, you're welcome to post them at the forum. I will try to answer them as soon as I can. And I will see you on the next tutorial. Take care and bye-bye for now.